Well, they missed the first like two minutes, but it's kind of what we talked about already the other day, so it's okay. So it looks like we have a local max at about x equals negative one, and the derivative there at negative one looks to also be like it's going to be zero because it looks like we're going to have a horizontal tangent line there. Now what about to the left and to the right of this guy? Well, if I look at the left of this max, I have an increasing piece. If my original function is increasing, you scroll down a little bit. If my original function is increasing, that would mean that my derivative is positive to the left. Since f is increasing. And then if I change to looking at the right, it would be negative to the right. No difference between the two types. For the minimum, it was negative and then positive. And then for the maximum, it was kind of flip-flopped. It was positive and then negative. That's not a coincidence. That's essentially exactly what's going to happen at all of our maxes and mins, and that's essentially the idea we're going to use to be able to find them. We're going to be able to use the derivative and figure out essentially where it changes sign. Where does it change from positive to negative or vice versa? And be able to find maxes and mins kind of algebraically without having to look at the graph. So I'll, hold, I'll wait five seconds before I scroll down. So next we've got a kind of a, a lot of definitions first, and I'm hoping we'll get to one example before we have to take our quiz. So for any function f at a point p in the domain of f where the derivative at that value is zero, so f prime of p equals zero, or f prime of p is what we call undefined, and I'll say a bit more about that in a second. This is going to be called a critical point. Note that it's a somewhat unfortunate occurrence that the actual coordinate point is also called a critical point. When something says critical point, it is 95% of the time just referring to the x value. Especially if I ask. If I ever ask for critical points, I just care about the x values. If I wanted to ask for the y value, so that y value, that f of p, can also be referred to as the critical value. If a function, we have a theorem, which is essentially just something that's true. If a function continuous on the real line, which just it, any function we're going to deal with. Oh, I didn't say anything about undefined. I got to talk about that for a second. Hold on. Undefined um, can mean a lot of things. In terms of our class, the thing you need to worry about is if you have a denominator equaling zero. Come on. So essentially when we're working with these, we're going to find the derivative and if we ever have any denominators, we're going to have to check when they're zero and that's going to be a critical point. You'll see, an, um, I think we're going to get to an example in a second. There's a lot of other things that make functions undefined. We're not going to worry about them. <laughs> so a function that's continuous on the real line has a local max or local min at p, then that point is a critical that is a critical point of the function. So if f has a local max or a min at x then the derivative of x would be equal to zero. 
Now, I know I also said critical points could be undefined, but those are never going to end up being our max or min points. They're going to be other points of interest. The converse of this statement, which means the opposite, is not true. That is, we can have a function that has a critical point, but no max or min there. A lot of the places where the derivative is undefined is going to be not a max or a min. So just because it's a critical point does not mean it's a max or a min, but if it is a max or a min, then it must have been a critical point. I'm going to come back to example one on Friday because we're going to do a fuller example in a second, and I'd rather get that one out of the way than this baby example. So what we're going to write down next, we're going to come back to example one. That'll probably be like a warm up fish thing on Friday. We're going to write down the process for finding local extrema. Extrema is just a word for maxes and mins, kind of talking about them at the same time. So I don't have to keep saying max and min. Now there's two ways we can do this. We're going to talk about one of them today and one of them on Friday. So we're going to write down the process, do an example, and then take our quiz. So for finding local extrema, the first thing you're going to do is find the, find the derivative. You're going to set the derivative equal to zero and determine if it's ever undefined. So if it has a denominator, we're going to need to check to see when that denominator would be zero. If there is no denominator, you don't need to worry about that piece. The large majority of the time, we don't need to worry about that piece. This is going to find the critical points. Then, like I said, we have two choices, something called the first derivative test or something called the second derivative test. We're going to talk about the first derivative test right now. So we either use the first derivative test, which is suggested. Suge suggest, I think that's how you spell suggested. And I'll talk about why the second derivative test is not suggested when we get to it. I'll give you all a couple seconds to catch up. I'm going a little fast because we're running out of time and I want to get through one example so that you can start your homework and actually have something of substance. I'm going to scroll down. You can catch it later if you need it. I'm sorry. So the first derivative test goes like this. What we're going to do is we're going to create a number line. And label the critical points on it. We're going to choose a test point, and this is going to make a lot more sense when we do the example in a second. You're going to choose the test point from each kind of section. It's going to, once we label the critical points, we're going to kind of have sections on the number line. You're going to plug these numbers into the derivative. So they're very loudly for a reason. <laughs> People always plug it into the wrong spot. And we're going to find out whether it's positive or negative. You're going to use that sign, and then I usually refer to it as a sign chart because we're looking at positive versus negative. So we're going to look at that number line sign chart kind of deal to determine whether each critical point is either a local max, a local minimum, or neither. Neither is an option. Oh, sorry, James. I just blew on my laptop and that probably sounded really weird. 
The way you're going to be able to tell which one it is. Is so we're going to kind of have these these number lines. Well, we're going to have just one of them, but like two options because we have a local max option and a local min option. So we're going to have critical points on there. And say we find that it goes from negative to positive. One thing I also like to do is I'd like to draw little line segments. So if this is talking about the derivative, if the derivative is negative, the original is decreasing and then increasing if it's positive. Drawing those little line pieces makes it kind of easier to see that that's totally going to be a min. So we're going to have a local min at x equals p. Whereas if the derivative changes from positive to negative, the original function must have been increasing and then decreasing. So we must have a local max at x equals p. Dang, what? I don't like it. I don't have enough time to do the one example that I wanted to do. So what I'll do instead is I'll come back up and I'll hit example one. So I'll put this up for five more seconds. It'll be one tiny little baby example. And then call it. I don't like it, but. All right, so scrolling back up to example one. So it's fine in the first derivative number line. So I kind of put this example before I even talked about the number lines. But so essentially what this is asking for is the derivative, find the critical points and do this little number line that I'm talking about. So what's the derivative of this function? We have x cubed, which would give us a derivative of 3x squared. You want to find when that derivative is equal to zero. Divide both sides by 3, you get x squared is 0. Square root both sides, you would get that x is 0. I don't really have the space to do all of the algebra out fully, but 3x squared is only going to be 0 if that thing is 0. Oh, well, I just unshared and reshared, so hopefully that fixed it as well. So we have x equals 0 being a critical point. There's no denominator there, so I don't need to worry about undefined. I make a number line. I usually like to label it with F prime so I remember what I'm talking about. I put that number on there. It doesn't need to be a nice number line. It just needs to be a number line. Notice how this now breaks it into two pieces, to the left of zero and to the right of zero. Pick a number that's less than zero, any number that's less than zero. I'm going to go with negative one. Pick a number that's greater than zero, any number. I'm going to pick one. Doesn't matter what number you pick. That's what I kind of meant by that test point idea. You're going to plug both of those values into the derivative. F prime of negative one would be 3 times negative 1 squared would be 3. That's a positive value, so I'm going to put a plus on my sign chart. So I'm making this a bit more of a legit example than it was, but <laughs> you plug in positive 1, you get 3. That's a positive value. I put a plus sign on my sign chart. We'll do a lot more examples of this on Friday. Now, what we would like to do next, I'm going to scroll down, but then scroll back up really quick, is we would like to see if the derivative changes sign in either of those two fashions. But it went from positive to positive, so it doesn't change at all. So this one wouldn't have a max or a min anywhere. So I made that one a bit more of a legit example. This was really all we wanted for, uh, for that. But that's kind of how these are going to go. We're going to find derivatives, set them equal to zero, 
and then create these little number line doodads. Again, we'll come back to this a lot more on Friday. Let me stop recording.